The penalties in the courts are, with a much discord, up to £20,000 fine and or six months imprisonment, so it can be both. In the Crown Court, under a limited fine and or two years imprisonment. Again, so it could be both. Factors affecting health and safety. Now, you will need to know the difference between these three factors for the exam, because they do ask questions on these particular factors. In other words, first one, occupational factor. What type of job do you do? Do you work with chemicals, dangerous equipment? What type of working methods do you adopt when you work in? What about the environmental factors? Are there high noise levels, poor lighting, or plus too much lighting? Dusty atmospheres, hot or cold temperatures. And lastly, the biggest cause of accidents in the workplace, and that's the human factor. And that's the behaviour of people affecting their safety and that of fellow workers, customers and visitors. Things like carelessness, lack of attention, inexperience, lack of training. In fact, one of the biggest causes of accidents in the workplace is horseplay or messing about at the workplace. The management of health and safety at work regs 1999 is quite important because it covers risk assessments. It actually states that all businesses regardless of size must carry out risk assessments and they must be documented, dated and they must be renewed as and when necessary which we look at later on. Risk assessments, formal risk assessments, the ones that are documented as opposed to informal risk assessments, which are, again we'll look at later on, must be carried out by competent persons. Now these are people that have received risk assessment training. They've got the knowledge, the experience and the skills to carry out risk assessments in the workplace. And there's a few other regulations which I mentioned on one of the first slides. Workplace safety and welfare regs, work and display screen equipment regs, manual handle regulations, 1992, personal protective equipment regs, COSH regs, substances as does to health, noise regulations, first aid regulations, 1981, and consultation with employees regs. Albeit these are not all the regulations, there are many besides. Now, let's have a look at the responsibilities under health and safety law. The employer's responsibilities are as follows. So far as is reasonably practicable, ensure the health, safety and welfare of employees. Provide and maintain safe plant and systems of work. Make arrangements for the safe use, handling, storage and transport of articles and substances. Provide information, instruction, training and supervision. Provide a safe place of work and safe entrance and exit and provide a safe working environment with adequate welfare facilities, which we'll look at in a few minutes. Plus, a written health and safety policy document must be provided where there are five or more employees, and this must be communicated to all staff. It is good business sense to have a written health and safety policy document, even if you're self-employed, as a single person, as a, as a single owner or proprietor. Because you'll find these days a lot of potential clients will ask for written health and safety policy documents, as I suggest, even if you're one or two people. So it does make good business sense, although it is not a legal requirement. Employees' legal responsibilities. So these are your legal responsibilities as regards health and safety at work. The first two really can be combined. Take care of your own and others' health and safety. Number three, or number two, whichever you want to look at it, cooperate with your employers. If you've been asked to or instructed to wear hearing defenders in a certain place at work, then you must wear them. And lastly, you must not misuse or interfere with anything provided for health and safety. For example, as a little diagram shows, using a fire extinguisher to water the plants or as a firefight in a Christmas party. Now, you will need to know the difference between the employer's and the employee's legal responsibilities. Again, they do ask questions. They'll put on a particular statement and they'll say, right, whose legal responsibility is this? And uh, you need to put on, obviously, the correct answer. And these are the welfare facilities that I mentioned earlier, what must be provided under health and safety law. First of all, toilets, then washing 
washing facilities with soap and water and drying facilities, drinking or potable water and a place to eat if meals are provided. What may be provided, a bit of a wish list if you like, changing facilities and lockers and a staff room. 